Hello everyone. Information Box Ticket Lifestyles brings you today continuation of plant tissue culture, application of plant tissue cultures. Let's learn about applications of plant tissue culture. Plant tissue culture has various applications such as number 1 micro propagation, number 2 virus free plants formation, number 3 artificial seeds, number 4 embryo rescue, number 5 haploids and triploids, number 6 somatic hybrids, number 7 cybirds, number 8 plant secondary metabolite formation, number 9 somoclonal variation, and lastly number 10 in vitro germplasm conservation. Let's begin with the understanding of micropropagation. The plant parts usually used for this type of propagation are apical meristem or auxiliary buds or the seedlings obtained by the in vitro germination of the seeds. Since this method of micropropagation is rapid and convenient for generating a large number of genetically identical plantlets, it has been used commercially for the mass multiplication of crop plants such as cardamom, apples, eucalyptus, bananas and many other ornamental or horticultural plants. Number 2. Virus-free plants One of the main purposes of propagation through tissue culture is to produce virus-free plants. This is very important to increase yield and quality. Agricultural plants which have the high risk of damage due to viral diseases include plants such as bananas, sugarcane, potatoes, apples, etc. Since meristem, such as apical meristem or auxiliary meristems, are free from viral infections, these tissues can be used as explants for mass multiplication to get a large number of virus free plants. Tissue culture using meristem is sometimes referred to as meristem culture, and the plantlets produced are known as mericlones. Number 3 Artificial Seed. Artificial seeds are the somatic embryos encapsulated by certain interact polymeric compounds such as alginate. They are very useful in the mass propagation of agriculture and hybrid varieties. Kindly don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of my videos. Number 4. Embryo Rescue Tissue culture also provides the means to overcome reproductive barriers between distantly related wide relatives of crop through embryo rescue and in vitro fertilization. It is very difficult to produce hybrid plants by interspecific crosses. Such hybridizations can result in abnormal endosperm, which causes premature death of embryos, resulting in the formation of sterilized seeds. The embryo from such hybrid plants can be excised and cultured on a suitable nutrient to produce new hybrids. This method of protecting the embryo viability and its development in vitro is called embryo rescue. Number 5. Haploids and Triploids The culture of immature anthers and pollen grains is done to induce the pollen grains to develop into multicellular embryos with half the normal number of chromosomes for the species haploids. When such haploid embryos are treated with chromosome doubling reagents example called chelcine, their normal chromosome number is restored. Thus, it is very easy method for the development of homozygous genotypes or pure lines. The generation of pure lines and haploids is very helpful for analyzing the expression of recessive characteristics which cannot be expressed in heterozygous conditions. Triploids are raised by culturing endosperms tissues and are useful in generating traploid plants which are sterile. It is very useful for creating seedless plants that are desirable in fruit crops such as grapes, citrus fruits, apples, pears, etc. Number 6. Somatic Hybrid Somatic hybrids are the hybrid plants dwell from the fusion of two somatic cells. The hybrid protoplast can be selected visually and cultured separately to develop into a callus and then differentiate it into a complete plant. This type of hybridization of distantly related plants through sexual fertilization is never possible in nature. 
Somatic hybridization is also known as parasexual hybridization. The fusion of isolated protoplast can be carried out with chemical agents such as PEG, polyethylene glycol, or by electrical force, a method called electrofusion. Kelson and his group produced the first somatic hybrid of two different species, Nicotiana gulca and Nicotiana lanxodorfi, in 1972. In 1978, Melchers developed for the first time a hybrid between plants of two different genus, Solanum tuberosum potato and Lycoperixcon esculentum tomato. The somatic hybrid thus developed was named pomatos or topatos. I would love if you keep supporting this channel by subscribing. Number 7. Cybird Fusion of a innucleated and nucleated protoplasts can result in a special type of somatic hybrid called as cybirds. Cybird can be used to transfer male sterility through mitochondrial genome or herbicide resistant through chloroplast genome characters through cytomatically inherited process. For example, cytoplasm male sterile character has been successfully transferred from N tobaccocum to N silvestrius and from N comparatus to Bersica napus after protoplast fusion. Number 8. Plant Secondary Metabolites Plants are the source of a large number of chemicals. Plants Derived chemicals can be divided mainly into two classes, primary metabolites and secondary metabolites. Chemicals such as proteins, amino acids, sugars, lipids, nucleic acid and their derivatives essential for the basic metabolic activities are called primary metabolites. Secondary metabolites are certain chemicals that are formed as byproducts of the primary metabolites such as alkaloids, flavonoids, tannin, trypin, essential oils, latex, etc. Plant secondary metabolites have a large number of uses as medicines, flavoring compounds, fragrances, natural rubber, sources of hydrocarbon, biofuel, etc. The extensive use of plants as the sources of these compounds has brought them to a verge of extinction. In this way, Plant tissue and cell cultures provide an alternative source for plant secondary metabolites. The plant cell cultures are the potential means of producing useful plant secondary products without depending on large-scale cultivation of source plants. Mitsui Petrochemical Industry in Japan in producing Shikonine on a commercial scale from Lithospermum erythrorhizone cultivations. Nitodencon, also in Japan, is producing ginseng cells from 20 kL tanks. Number 9. Somoclonal Variation The advantage of micropropagation for mass multiplication of a plant species is that it can provide a large number of genetically identical plants in large numbers. But it has been observed that it is not true in the case of plants which are regenerated from the callus cultures maintained for a very long period and also from cell suspension cultures. Such plants show variations and such variations observed during these asexual means of propagation are called somoclonal variations. The term somoclones was proposed by Lankin and Scowcroft in 1981 for the plants that were produced from a tissue isolated from a plant variety and the variation observed among the somoclones was termed somoclonal variation. The somoclonal variations have potential application in agriculture and crop improvement by producing somoclonal mutants with desirable characters. Number 10. In vitro plant germplasm conservation Tissue culture methods are used for the conservation of plant varieties for future studies and plant breeding purposes. Because of the extensive use of modern agricultural varieties and hybrids, primitive crops and their wild relatives are on the path of extinction. The best method of protecting them and to prevent the erosion of plant genetic resources is to conserve them through tissue culture. 
collection and conservation of any plant parts or tissue through tissue culture is done in vitro gene banks. Germplasm conservation can be carried out by collecting and preserving genetic resources by conventional methods in the forms of seeds, vegetative propagules, etc. The conservational method of germplasm conservation has several limitations. Germplasm cannot be conserved for a very long time. The seeds are short-lived and have a demerits of seed domercy, seed-borne diseases and germplasm needs high input of labor, space and cost. The in vitro approaches through cell and tissue culture can overcome many of these inconveniences and problems with the following tissue culture mediated conservation methods. Number 1. Cryopreservation and number 2. Cold storage. Number 1. Cryopreservation. It is a long-term preservation of selected cells and tissues at very low temperature equal to the temperature of liquid nitrogen at the minus of 196 degrees Celsius. The tissues can be stored at this temperature indefinitely with the help of cryoprotectants such as glycerol, mannitol, dimethyl, sulfoxide, proline, etc. Cryopreservation has proved to be an efficient conservation method for the long-term storage of genetic stocks without any loss of variabilities and mutations. Number 2. Cold Storage This method of storage of plant tissues and parts for conservation is suited for a short term. The germplasm can be stored in the form of meristems such as shoot tips or auxiliary birds or other similar parts under low temperatures ranging from 4 to 15 degrees Celsius under nutrient limitations. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching till the end. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon button so you don't miss any of my videos. Thank you.